Hi, good day and welcome to Nats part 12. In this video, I'm going to continue with Nats key value store. In the previous video, part 11, I show you how to use key value store from the command line. So we'll continue and now see how to do the same thing. We, some of the things we did on the command line, we're going to see how to do it in code. Go code, of course. So let's jump in. In terms of documentation, I suggested that you read this section of the doc on the benefit of key value store, some of the things you can do, right? So we can put value, delete value, all of that stuff. And we did that from, from command line. So we can see now how to do some of these things from um, Go code. And so if you um, look at the documentation here and you scroll down to developing with NATS and you ex expand that, then you can see Jetstream under developing with NATS and then just under that, you'll see using key value store. And depending again on which language you use, there are some examples, but of course we're doing Go. So as you can see, for creating and deleting buckets, you can simply do key value and give the bucket name as a string. And that's how you look up or bind to an existing bucket so that you can use it from code. Um, you can do create key value and you give some configuration. And we'll see that too and you, it returns you the key value that is already bounded to, right? So if you don't want to create one, but you just have the name of one, then you use the key value. Now these um, are methods off of the jet stream um, value. So they're not telling you that there, but this is what these, these are actually methods. They're not function within NAS. They're actually methods off of the jet stream context. And then you see here, example, how you can actually get keys, get their version, how you can put things, different ways of putting and updating things, creating values, and how to delete values. And then um, how to get all keys. Um, so you can say for this bucket, what are all the keys that are available so that you can iterate over them to get um, the values for those keys. And then of course, things like history, and then how you can watch, which is what we did on the command line. So with that out of the way, you know where the documentation is, let's jump into the code. So from my command line, I already have NATS running. Um, I'm listing the streams with minus A and the key value store, I'm doing a listing of that too with my watch command. And because I don't wanna make this video too long, um, I've already written the code. So I'll review the code with you. Again, don't worry, all the code is in a Git repository. The repository is linked below. You can clone it, or you can just simply use your web browser, navigate to the code, and look up all the code, okay? So anyway, um, when I copy the previous code example that we had from section 10, um, it looked pretty much like this, right? We had, you know, the name and all these other things to connect with NATS, and then we had a way to figure out whether or not we were using security or not to connect to NATS. And so that still remained the same. We connected to NATS here, and we do a fatal if we can't connect the NATS because there's nothing else to do. And then we use the NATS connection to get our jet stream context. And this is what I'm talking about, right? Um, here, you see, jet stream return in jet stream context for messaging and stream management. So all of this is stuff we've done before. So here's the news thing. So first of all, we want to list all buckets and their keys. So imagine that what we want to be able to do is this command here nats key value list and then if we see a bucket we want to do for that bucket then list all the keys within it so if we add for example nats and then key value and then say add music as the thing we want right well, let's go with songs right and then i want to do nats as you can see up there it's listing that bucket but what if i want to add so let's add a so put um within song let's put a key and value with key one let's call it zero zero one for example and we want to get a listing of the keys so we can do that key value um, list and then if we do songs well we see that's just um, within this um, songs bucket, we have those keys. And then if we don't pass the bucket, then we just get 
the buckets. So our code is going to try and mimic these two things, which is listing the buckets and listing the keys within each bucket. So how do we do that? Well, we do nice key value store, and this returns a channel of string. So a read channel of string, and it's used to retrieve a list of key value store names. So retrieve this key value store name from a channel. And so we can do a iteration over this. So we can say range over this, the bucket name, and we could print out that bucket name. And then for each bucket name, right? If we look up the bucket name, remember this is just strings. So we still have to look up that bucket name or bind to it. So you can use that string and say, hey, Jetstream, bind to this key value, uh, to this key value store using the string name. And if we don't have a problem doing that, then let's go try to get out the keys. If there was an error binding to that bucket, then we should just skip and continue. And then once we have bounded to that bucket, then on the bucket itself, we're going to call this keys method, which returns a slice of strings. That slice of strings are all the keys. So now, again, if we have an error, get in this list of keys in that bucket, we'll just continue. If not, we'll just iterate over it and print it out to the tab. So that's fairly easy. So let's do this. Let's, um, we can actually, let's uh, comment out this bit of code. So we can just run it. Now what you see here is me waiting for control C to exit the program as opposed to waiting for a specific time. So let's just do it. So we do go, run, and then that. And we'll see um, bucket, key value song. And it's just sitting there and waiting. Like I say, um, if I type control C, now you see got that signal to say exit. And so it exit. So it does list out the key value store. But notice what it's using. It's using kv underscore songs instead of songs. So that is why we don't see our list of keys. And we can tell this because if we go back here and we say, well, what are we binding to? We can say, if it's not an error, let's print out what that error is. So we can do something like FMT, you know, oh, print, uh, so log that error. Let me see, do I have a logger already? No, I don't have a logger. So let's do log that. Print F, for example, and I can say fail to look up or bind to bucket. Bucket, and then the error message is error. Okay, so let's clean up and let's rerun the program again. I can see fail to bind to bucket not bucket not found. So why is not saying bucket not found when in fact it gives us the same name that we're using? Well, the reason why we're getting that is because while KV um, store names return the stream name for the buckets, when we do KV value for the bucket name, we actually have to specify the name of the bucket that is without the KV underscore. So what we really want to do is to strip off the kv underscore from the name so before we print out the bucket name we should yeah we know we're getting the error um, the bucket name because that's what it returns from the in the channel so we can just strip it off so um trim force three or trim yeah force three um characters from bucket name and so what we can do is say bucket name is equals to um bucket name that um from these three characters the first one and now if we rerun this we should get the correct value so let's go back here we're not going to clean up so we can see the difference and if we run it we'll see now that our 
bucket is using the name songs and then we can see the keys there and then we can control C and we kill that um, so that seems to work um, what if we add another bucket so that's kv add let's say videos and then we'll do NAS kv put you know videos let's say replay all right and then we'll just do two um other hour something like this and let's rerun our program this time we're going to clean up and let's rerun our program and we can see that under the bucket song we have one key zero one zero zero one and the bucket we have two keys three and two so that is working just fine and that's the exact same result we'll do if we do not kv list songs we'll see the keys and if we do not kv list videos we'll see three and two so our application is working just fine so the other thing we want to know to do is how to create um buckets okay so let's uncomment this other bit of code and so to create a bucket let's say we want to create a bucket with the name sensors so we're going to use jetstream context that create key value it takes a nat key value config value and if we hover over this you can see there are a number of things you can pass to how you cre for creation of that bucket some of these we saw from the command line that you can tell it give the description history how many values you want to remember for a key and so on time to live and all these different things of course most of these are default have defaults and we just require a bucket name when we create from the command line so the same thing here we'll just do bucket and give it a bucket name which in this case we want it to be sensors now if you remember what i said when you create a bucket you get two values back you get back the key value which represents that key value store and an error so you already bounded to it so you don't need to look it up like we were doing here with kv value on a string because we already get it when we create it so from that point all we have to do is check and see if it was created successfully if it was now we can use our sensor key value store and then we can put strings so we can let's say put temperature and humidity and so these are three keys with their in, you know corresponding values so you can imagine that we were monitoring like the temperature the humidity and the pressure and we just keep updating those value maybe every five minutes every 10 minutes whatever and so somebody can either look at the entire bucket of sensors to see all the sensor measurements or they can simply watch one of the particular um, keys to see when that particular key change and so that's what we're going to do here with our monitor we're going to say sensor that watch so remember this is on that bucket and we're going to say what is the set of values we want to watch and here you can give a pattern so it tells you that you can watch for update to the keys that match the key per um, argument which could include wild cards watch will send a nil entry when it has received an initial value so this is important and we have to deal with that initial value being nil and so we're just going to say watch for everything which means we're interested in any key that's in that in the sensor bucket. And once we don't have a problem creating our watch, which returns, by the way, a key watcher, which is a value from NATS. So what is a key watcher? A key watcher has some methods, methods on it, and one of them is called updates. And once you call the updates method, it returns a channel on which you can read the updates to the entries that you say you're interested in for this monitor. And so what I did was I say, go off, create a go routine to go read those monitor, you know, watch those um, values or handle those values. And then we'll just wait for the user to exit the program, which is by doing that control C. So what does our handle reading does? It takes this, um, value that's returned from updates which is a read channel it only channel that sends key value entries and so on that channel it just have to loop over you know do a for range over that channel gets an entry and remember what it says in the documentation for um updates well for the watch sorry it says it sends an initial nil value so if the entry is 
not nil, that's the only time we want to do any kind of login. Otherwise, we're going to, um, you know, we're going to ignore it. Now, um, here I'm using log info and I'm going to be using the um, log package from um, charm bracelets. So because of that, I'll go back here and change this to log info and then I'll say fail to watch read bucket and then I'll do a structured log so bucket name and then I'll give um, the bucket value and then um, the error and that's the error so bucket name is bucket name like okay, that and then if I go back up here um, okay, this already included charms bracelets. Good. So I save that. And so what we should be able to see now is when I run the code, it's of course going to list each key, um, each bucket and the value, but also create a new bucket called sensors and sit there and watch that sensor bucket. Okay, so let's clean up this. Then I can run my program again. So let's do go run. And exactly, it lists the buckets that are available and it's sitting there and it's waiting. And I got some error, um, some log telling me, it's like, oh, um, these are the values that are in there. And that's because I created those values. So once I watch them, I also get them, right? I mean, the program doesn't know that, oh, well, oh, um, I created those values, so therefore I shouldn't get them. We didn't do anything like that. We just create the values and then later on we said watch so we get all values that are all keys and their values. So that's there. So now that's that there, what we can do, um, if we look, we can see our sensor there. Let's put something on our sensor. So we do NATS, KV, put sensors, and then we can change the pressure from, what is the pressure right now? 10 bars to 32 PSI. And notice how we got a new line from our application saying that the pressure was changed. Of course, we can change anything else, any other value, or we could add something new. So let's say we want to measure um, speed. So we want to measure speed. And so we can say um, 60 miles per hour, something like that, all right? And now we, you can see our application is watching for every value that's inserted into our sensor bucket and so it gets that and it prints it out. So that is essentially most of the things that I want to show you from the code aspect. So again, I wanted to make this video too long. I'll cut it here, but in the next video, I'll show you an example of how you can use this to build like an application. We're gonna try and do like a basic streaming application. Of course, we're not gonna do the full thing, but I can show you how you might start thinking about it. If you're not a subscriber and you've reached this far in the video, please consider being a subscriber. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you for sticking with me and for coming back. Really appreciate it. Can't thank you enough. Take care. See you in the next video. Be safe. Bye.